Houston, Coach, if you uh, can make an opening statement, if you can, kind of an exciting finish. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, these, these guys, they have, you know, they continue to fight, and it's amazing because we, we've, you know, obviously both teams had some adversity, you know, with coaching changes and all that, and these guys kept plugging. And I, I tell everybody, I believe this, they've gotten better in, the, in our bowl practice which isn't always the case with, with certain football teams, especially with teams who have a, a coaching change because, you know, they realize that most of those coaches aren't going to be there anymore. But to these guys' credit, they, they kept grinding and kept, uh, uh, kept us in the football game. And, and uh, you know, obviously it was, it, it was a miracle, but we, we, will, we will gladly accept a miracle. Coach, uh, if you could make a comment about each one of the players okay. and their you know, contribution today. You know, obviously, you, if you watch the game, I mean, Farrell from Jump Street, he was running like a beast. I mean, it, it, to be honest, let me start by saying this. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is a f really f good football team. And we knew, we knew their offense was the, the best offensive line we've seen all year, best running backs, two best running backs we've seen all year, and the, the wide receiver. We, we knew he was the best wide receiver, and I wasn't blowing smoke when I said that. I believe that. Um, so I knew we we're going to have a hard time getting them off the field, which put a lot of pressure on our offense because they, you know, they had to, to do some things they weren't, you know, weren't ready to do as far as trying to keep up with the pace of the game on a limited number of plays because obviously it ended up closer than it really was because we had the ball for that, those last four minutes. But um, from Jump Street, Farrell ran like a, like a beast. He ran like their guys, and, and uh, he's a great football player. Um, if I was the head coach at Houston, he would be my starting wheel linebacker, by the way. <laughs> he knows that. Um, Greg, you know, Greg's dynamic. He's gotten better and better as a quarterback. Um, you know, Coach Herman's got a lot, a lot of tools to work with him. Uh, because the truth is with Greg, he's never, he, he's never really had a true quarterback coach here in, at Houston. We've had offensive coordinators with the quarterback coach title, but they really aren't quarterback guys. Whereas once Coach Herman gets in here and works with him, uh, unlimited potential with him. You know, I, I said this. To uh, Deontay, because we ran the ball, we were, that's how we were moving the ball early, and most of the game was running it. Deontay wasn't really doing a whole lot, and for a wide receiver to have to block, you know, 50 times in a row, it's, it, it'd be easy for you to tap out and and uh, you know go in the tank or or uh, you know not, not quit, but but you know just get in a bad place. He didn't. He kept kept fighting, and he ended up making you know a couple great touchdown catches there at the end, and and obviously. Uh, the two-point play to, to uh, take the lead there at the end. And Joey, Joey's a this this guy. He's he's my he's my anchor. He's a war daddy. I don't even know how many tackles he made today. Probably none. But 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 I'm gonna tell y'all. Joey Joey's an NFL nose guard, and they got about three offensive linemen that are NFL offensive linemen. So I mean, it was it was a battle. Um, that's about as many words as I've ever said. Well, I'm just trying to challenge you. Okay, it's opening up for questions. First, Cedric Bailey with the Lapita News. First of all, you guys made it so tough for us as media to vote for our MVP because we had voted for you, Farrell, at first. But when your quarterback stepped up and he got fired off of your energy, the whole team stepped up. So can you talk about it, uh, uh, quarterback Mr. Uh, Greg, for tell us about what he did to you to make this thing happen? Um, Farrell's the man. Um, he's a beast. <laughs> And I feed off him. I give him the ball. He make plays. They make it easier for me. So I really just be feeding off when I'm out there. OK, go ahead. Hey, Charles Boyd with the BGC Sports Network. Um, I mean, so many things to talk about right now. But first, I got to ask about the gutsy call to go for two. I thought it was very gutsy, um, especially after recovering the back-to-back -back onside kicks. I mean, your thoughts behind that and what really swayed you to go, go ahead and go for two? <laughs> well, the truth is our first uh, bowl practice after uh, Coach Levine was released and I was named interim head coach. We made a decision that day at practice that if it came down to the end of the game, we were going for two no matter what. And we started, this is, this is a true story, we started practicing at the two-point play the very first practice. So we, we've probably run that play, I don't know, 25, 30 times um, in practice. And uh, the truth is uh, they, 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 they played the right coverage to stop the play and they actually stopped the primary receiver. But uh, Deontay obviously got open and Greg found him, which, uh, which is a credit to those guys. But there was no decision. They knew, they knew three weeks ago. And, and so um, it, to me, I, I want to do it because I, I did believe this. In the last two years since I've been at Houston, we've been down there so many times inside the 10 and just haven't scored. I mean, we've won eight games two years in a row, but, 
I mean, we, you, you, we're, we're a team that could have won 10 games easily both years. We've just somehow, you know, things have happened. So I want to give them confidence and take the pressure off of them and let them know, hey, we're going to go for two. And if we don't get it, it's on me. Because I'd be sitting here having to answer all these questions of why, you know, only an idiot would have gone for it after coming back from 21 <laughs> points down. That's true. But there was no pressure. There was no decision to be made because we made it a long time ago. Um, and, and, and we stuck with our plan. Okay. Question? David, um, this offense it seems to, it's very tempo oriented. Can you just, uh, there at the end, was that just a matter of, of finally getting that tempo going? And then for De uh, Deontay, uh, how tough is it when you aren't as involved in the game to kind of keep <coughs> your mind in it and then when you're needed late in the final three minutes that you can come up with the big play? Um, you know, I be with Farrell, you know, almost every day, you know, on and off the field. So, you know, I have no problem sitting there, you know, blocking for him. So, I just look at it as, you know, if that's what our offense is doing right now, that's what we're going to do. For uh, Greg and – Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we, offensively, uh, I think we had pretty good rhythm and tempo from the beginning of the game. I, I just think that, that their offense stayed on the field so long and, and, and we couldn't get – we just couldn't get it rolling. And uh, – you know, we, we didn't play very good on third down today. I don't know what they were, but but uh, wasn't good enough. Um, and, and so they kept converting, and, and it kept our guys on the sideline. But we weren't getting those stops in the fourth quarter, obviously. Made them kick a field goal one time. But the onside kicks gave us the possessions that we needed to win the game. I, you know, they, they, they're, they're a big physical football team. They're, they're not – I don't think they're accustomed to playing that kind of spread offense, you know, with our, our speed and our skill. Um, but you got to have enough plays to, to, to affect them, you know, Fatigue-wise, conditioning-wise, and 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 just giving giving these guys enough chances to touch the ball because we got playmakers. Okay, question here for uh, Greg and Deontay. Can you can you take us through the the uh, the last touchdown pass and the two-point conversion? Uh, for, who was supposed to be the primary receiver first of all? Uh, the primary receiver was supposed to be um, Marquise Ambles, but the safety stayed on the hash, so he was wide open and made the play. <laughs> and he just takes both through both those plays. Oh, and then the two-point conversion. Marcus Edge, we had shifted him in motion. He was the primary receiver on that. And both of the, you know, defenders jumped on him, left me wide open in the corner of the end zone. So I just went up and grabbed the ball. How, how, how did you get him so open on that uh, on the touchdown? Uh, you know, just like he said, you know, Marquise was the primary receiver on that play. You know, he ran a fade route. I ran right up the hash. Greg does, wasn't nobody Greg does a good job of looking off the safety. <laughs> yeah. And he looked, he, he did. He looked the safety out and the safety got too wide and, and Deontay was wide open. Wide open. Okay, go ahead. Demario Davis, Dallas Entertainment Journal. For Joe and Kenneth, can you all just uh, talk about how important this was for uh, Jacoby? Man. Uh, you know, it was huge. You know, um, he came in the season early, and uh, to have something go on like that with him, uh, you know, it makes what we do a real blessing. So uh, to get out there and get the W and have, you know, him watching and all that stuff is great, you know, because uh, he's been there all season with us, and, um, you know, I know he loved it. Man, it's kind of like a fairy tale ending, man. He's going through some stuff, you know what I'm saying? We went through some stuff throughout the season, and it, it's saying keep fighting. He taught us to keep fighting, and we did it, and we came out with the win. Question? Dave Michaels with the North Texas Sports Network. Coach, when you were talking about going for the two-point conversion and it was decided three weeks ago, all four of your players were all moving their heads up and they all look like bobbleheads up there. I want you to know that. But what I want to know is, by the way, what is your lottery pick numbers for tonight? <laughs> Great gamble. The onside kicks, talk about that for just a second as far as the execution of that. Talk about your kicker. Talk about the special teams on that field at the time. And was field condition anything that was playing in part of this? Because we know it's been raining all day, that field gets a little slick. So talk a little bit about well, that. Well, uh, the, the truth is, I'm a defensive coordinator by trait. I, I don't know a whole lot about special teams. I, I know I I do know this. I do know this that that uh, the two years I've been in Houston, Coach Levine. First of all, Coach Levine is a special teams guru, and and J and Jamie Christian, our special teams coordinator, is a guru too. So w we have like four or five different ones that we use. They don't always work, but every week in practice, I'm standing there watching. I'm like, man, how many do we have? So the 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 only topic after, for the first one was which one were we going to use, and uh, we you know we had a little discussion and we went with the one and it worked. But you're right, I didn't know that I didn't know this field was that slick till I went out there in pregame warmups. It was to me it was it, you know it, it was it's tough. It's it's raining. It's cold. Uh, uh, but so anyway, the, the kicker did a great job doing it, and obviously you know they'd like to have their you know their hands team in better 
position to, to make the plays, or I don't know what happened, but hey, we got them both. So Coach Christian, shout out to him. Yep. Hey, Kenneth, um, can you just kind of take us through that, that last onside kick and uh, what you saw? It looked like the ball went underneath his legs, and you, I mean, you just happened to be right there, and you just were right yeah. on it. Uh, just something we worked on at practice, you know. Um, in practice, I actually did the wrong thing. I went ahead, and uh, you know, we made the adjustment. I was supposed to loop around the, our L2, and uh, that's what I did. And uh, you know, Luke Stice was L2, and he went down there, and he hit the guy, and uh, the guy came up, and the uh, ball just slipped right underneath him. I was there to grab it. <clears throat> I would just like to know from the from the players real quick. Um, <coughs> game was quite emotional, especially at the end there. I'd just like to hear from you guys. What did it mean for you guys to come back from the deficits you had to overcome and win this game? Um, we've been through a lot of games where, you know, we was coming from behind and we got close to coming back and winning the game, but we just couldn't finish it, you know, just like Coach Gibbs said. You know, it's just it's just all about just not never quitting. We just went out there and just gave it all we had and laid it all out on the field for our seniors. If I had one word to describe it, it would be finally. <laughs> uh, man, we've been through so many, like Deontay said, we've been through so many games, man. I can count six off the top of my head that uh, it came down to the last possession. It can be either offense and execute, defense and execute, and we finally did it. And, uh, man, I was crying for real. <laughs> yeah, um, I know personally I was out there three plays and uh, resulted in three losses on the last play of the game. So, you know, to finally get out there and finish, it was, uh, it was definitely special for the team. Coach Gibbs, Simone Eli from KPRC in Houston. Um, what does the fight in the fourth quarter from this team show that they have in the future coming with Coach Herman coming? What does this team have? It, it, these, these kids know how to win football games. I mean, we, talk, we keep talking about these close losses, but like I said, we've won eight games two years in a row. And uh, these, kids, they, these, these, these kids are tough kids. They're, they're resilient. Um, and and I, think, I think Coach Herman's stepping into a great situation. Obviously, he, he picked this job. He, Probably had his choice of jobs, um, but you know, to me, to me, all I want I want to make sure when he turned the tape on, he saw kids playing hard and kids fighting, and really that's what we do. So, um, I don't know that answer your question, but <laughs> these kids are they're special. Question, Greg. Um, Coach Gibbs had mentioned with Coach Herman now coming and, and his specialty being with quarterbacks. What does that mean to you in terms of your development and, and maybe getting a, a full season, hopefully, under your belt? And then for Deontay and, and Kenneth, just an offensive-minded coach coming in, and you know, what do you guys see you know, in terms of the future of this offense with most of you guys coming back? Uh, the, the future is bright. He had three great quarterbacks at Ohio State, and um, they all did um, a terrific job. And um, for these guys to come back with me, it'll, it'll be great. We're going to uh, come back and have a better season. Um, it's exciting, you know, uh, to watch what they did, you know, just the game yesterday. Um, knowing he's going to come in with that uh, offensive mindset, you know, they've always obviously been uh, been able to put up a lot of points. So uh, we're going to get everybody on the same page, buy in, and uh, hopefully put up a lot of points next year. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? Right here. Uh, Joey is the, uh, the, the lone representative of the defense up here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that had to be a frustrating afternoon for the most part uh, because they had those two 90-yard drives and, and you just really had a lot of trouble getting them off the field. Um, just kind of talk about the frustration building and how you were able to, to kind of overcome that. Um, the whole year we've done a great job of not panicking. And, uh, you know, when things get tough, sometimes it get real tough and sometimes you prevail with them. But uh, two 90-yard drives is hard, but there's more can be played than that. Coach Gibbs? Uh, during the game, it got. Oh, sorry. No, you're uh, good. During the game, you know, it was a lot of you know waves and things like that, and the momentum. And you know, later in the third quarter, it got to the point where things started getting you know real emotional and uh, chippy on the field. Did you talk about uh, maybe what you told the players, or if the players came together on their own, and what happened at that point to just allow the team to roll through the fourth quarter? Well, honestly, I've been we've been talking about it all week because. I just wanted these guys to know as emotional as we were going to be for the game, you know, just through all the transition and all the stuff going on, that their football team's the, the same way. I mean, they're, 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 it, they're, it, there was a recipe for disaster today in, in, in bowl planning because to have two interim coaches, one of them gets fired and one of them leaves for another job, you're, you forget that you got 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids out there who just lost 
the dude who either brought them to school or the reason they went to school or not not saying that's right or wrong so we talked about it you know hey you got to control your emotions you got you, you can't you can't you know they're going to talk we're going to talk they're they're from a different part of the country than we're from it was it was just i thought our kids handled it pretty good i, I really did it got it did get chippy at times um but i really thought both both teams handled it pretty good considering you know all the stuff we we that that has happened to both teams